Lena is well known for being great alongside Grace, but what if I told you she's one of the most versatile and easy characters to build in the game? Well, as always, today I'll be breaking down why she's amazing, what her kit does, how to build her, and more. But before this, remember to like, comment, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe if you want good luck. Let's get into it. Lena plays a lot like the other supports in Sendless Zone Zero, which is actually a good thing. Despite this, she does have her own unique gameplay mechanics which make her fun, but overall she's definitely straightforward once you understand her game plan. On that note, her main focus is to apply her pen ratio buff to her allies, build up anomaly on the enemies if possible, and allow your main damage dealer to perform a quick assist after she uses her EX special attack. So with that out of the way, let's start with Rena's base stats, because this is where things get interesting. Rena gains 14.4 pen ratio from her core skill upgrades, but keep in mind that gaining the last 4.8% is actually harder than you think. Now being given any pen ratio at all is actually very impactful, but we'll talk about this later. Now stats aside, let's talk about about her core passive. It reads, when ordering Drusilla or Anastella to attack, other squad members' pen ratio increases together with Rena's by 25% of Rena's pen ratio, plus 6% scaling to 12%, up to 30%. The effect ends when both Drusilla and Anastella return to Rena. In simple terms, this means that Rena will increase her allies' pen ratios while Drusilla and Anastella are out on the field. You can identify them being out on the field by, well, not being next to Rena. Something worth mentioning here about Rena and her ghosts is that doing certain attacks will leave them out on the field for longer. Performing a basic attack or a dodge counter will cause the ghost to stay out for roughly 7 seconds, and doing a chain attack or a special attack regardless of how much energy you have will leave them out for 9 seconds. Additionally, her pen ratio buff can be seen below the team's health bar, and you could use this as your indicator for when to swap back to Rena. Let's break down Rena's basic attacks. The first basic attack skill Rena has is Whack the Dimwit, which is a 4 part attack combo that applies physical damage in the first 2 hits and electric damage in the third and fourth. You can perform this by simply left clicking four times or by performing the basic attack input four times instead. The first physical attack is identified by Rena throwing out one of her ghosts. The second is identified by her moving the previously thrown out ghost a second time. The third electric dealing attack has Rena raise herself in the air slightly while also dealing electric damage. And the final attack is a shower of electric damage over the enemy's heads. Something worth mentioning here is that any actions you perform with Rena during Drusilla and Anacella's attacks will not interrupt where Rena is in her basic attack combo. This means you can do any combination of her basics, sneak in a special attack, and still return back to where you were originally in your basic attack combo. Side note, these attacks do have pretty low damage and daze multipliers, and therefore you'd only use them to make sure your pen ratio buff is active. Her second basic attack skill is Shoe the Fool, which is what happens when you hold down her basic attack input instead. This causes Drusilla and Anastella to return back to Rena's side and perform a circle slash shower of electric damage directly surrounding her. Interestingly, this attack can also be performed when Rena holds down either her enhanced or non-enhanced special attack. Shoe the Fool has a higher damage and daze multiplier than Whack the Dimwit, however this is in exchange for it being a close ranged move and removing the pen ratio buff since the ghosts are forced to return. On that note, let's talk about Rena's special attacks. The unenhanced version of her special attack throws one of her ghosts in a straight line while bouncing. Although this has an extremely low daze and damage multiplier, it does still cause Rena's pen buff to be active for 9 seconds, so there's value in this. Her enhanced special attack is a line of electric damage that gives her invulnerability while casting it. This move is also one of Rena's most important, since it has a 546 to 1092% damage multiplier alongside a 444 to 667% daze scaling. This alongside her throwing out the ghosts for a longer period of time and providing a 9 second pen ratio buff makes using this skill her number one priority. All of this, by the way, is without me accounting for the real biggest winner of her performing her special attack, which is allowing your main damage dealer to quick assist onto the field. This is especially important if you are using an attack character who has a Starlight W engine on, since this quick assist will activate its passive too. Rina's ultimate actually separates itself from other supports simply because you'd actually consider using it. Of course, this depends on the team that Rina is supporting, but a team like Race Piper Rina actually finds good value in using using the support's ultimate instead of either damage dealers. The reason for this is Rena's ridiculously high damage multiplier on her ultimate and both Grace and Piper being anomaly characters. Now in truth, her ultimate does not do that much damage, all things considered, but given that Piper and Grace do a majority of their damage through anomalies, their ultimates don't do that much either. Additionally, Rena's ultimate provides 20 energy to the next character who she swaps to, while all other teammates gain 10 energy. So given that Grace and Piper do the most damage when they're applying their anomalies and proccing disorder, it's actually 
actually better for them in most cases to accept the additional energy from Rena's ultimate. This way, they can use their anomaly building EX special attacks sooner. Now, on the topic of Grace, Piper, and Anomaly, let's talk about Rena's additional ability. It states that Rena increases the duration of shock inflicted on enemies by any character by 3 seconds. When shocked enemies are on the field, all squads' electric damage increases by 10%. The reason this is so great is because this pairs very well with what Grace's game plan is. The element damage is nice, but Grace does most of her damage via her shock. This being increased by 3 seconds actually calculates out to a 300 175% damage increase. I won't go too deep into anomaly explanations here since I've explained it a few times, but I will link you my grace video if you're curious why the shock duration increase is huge. Long story short though, the shock duration increase paired with disorder creates huge damage and makes her additional ability a huge buff to grace's disorder playstyle. Now the rest of Rena's skills are pretty unimportant since they're just a way for Rena to keep Drusilla or Anastella on the field. That being said, Rena does have an evasive assist which is worth noting since they're different from defensive assists that give you days. In terms of skill priority, Rena only really needs to upgrade her core skill for the added pen ratio. However, if you're looking to maximize damage on her, the order of upgrades should be the following. EX special, followed by chain attack, followed by her basic attack with dodge, and assist being tied. Everything besides her EX special and the occasional ultimate in a Grace Piper team won't really see much usage though, honestly, since she's mostly just there to put out a pen buff. Everything besides her EX special and the occasional ultimate won't really see much usage though, honestly, since she's mostly just there to put out a pen buff. Zenla Zone Zero has had its fair share of complicated characters, each each with improvements you can make to their combos, and Rena is no different. Therefore, I compiled every single optimization in tip or trick to make Rena the absolute best she can be. The result? Yeah, this isn't a joke. When I said Rena's job is just to apply her pen buff, I wasn't kidding. In most cases, being on the field with Rena is already a DPS loss unless you're using her EX special attack. To be clear, this EX special attack and the shock she applies to enemies does do decent damage. However, any time spent on her instead of trying to build stun or deal damage with your main DPS yes, will feel worse. Truthfully, the damage she does even if you commit to an anomaly build is not worth being on the field for too long, so this is actually just her most optimized combo. Use her EX special attack when you have energy and enjoy a pen ratio buff alongside some anomaly buildup. On a more serious note, if you don't have energy and your pen ratio buff is about to fall off, performing a quick basic attack or unenhanced special attack depending on the scenario is perfectly fine. The job of Rena and her combo is to get her ghost out as fast as possible for as long as possible, so either of these works fine. Now on to Rena's best set. She does have two options here which is nice with Freedom Blues and Swing Jazz both being great regardless of which you choose to be the four piece set effect. Reducing the target's anomaly buildup res or increasing squad damage are both excellent choices. It just depends on your team composition and what you need more of. I won't go too deep into team composition yet but if you aren't running Rena alongside anomaly focused teams, Swing Jazz definitely has great value since you're focusing primarily on the damage increase. One team, specifically Ellen, Rena, Sokaku, and this is where a swing jazz four piece effect would help a lot. Ultimately, there isn't a huge difference between the two here since each has its own value and every fight will play out differently, so just use the set which rolled better substat wise. Rena has a couple options for her W engine choice. The most and best performing is her signature, Weeping Cradle, since it gives her energy regen, increased damage against a target, and pen ratio on its advanced stats. However, obtaining this is more difficult since it is a standard banner weapon with the only guaranteed way to obtain it being in exchange for 600 residual signals. Your next best options are the following though. Mark 2, Mark 3, Unfettered Game Ball, and Slice of Time. Unfettered Game Ball is designed for crit based team compositions where Rena can apply the 12% crit rate and can make use of the 20% energy regen. Mark 2 and Mark 3 also provide buffs of the team which can make them viable W engines too, but Mark 2 is designed specifically for anomaly teams where Mark 3 can be used anytime an ally needs attack. It's good for crit and anomaly teams. Your final option here is Slice of Time, and this option is here primarily for the pen ratio it provides. It does also give energy regen alongside decibel generation, but now we need to talk about pen ratio. Part of the reason why Weeping Cradle and Slice of Time are good choices for W engines is because of the pen ratio they give. However, what we need to talk about right now is how much pen ratio you need to cap out on Rena's passive. With simple math, we can see that 72% is the amount that is needed to maximize this passive, but unfortunately there isn't a way to hit 72 exactly. If we add the pen ratio from Rena's W engine, the Puffer Electro 2P set effect, a pen ratio main stat on 5th slot, and the 14.4% pen ratio Rena receives from her core passives, this only leaves you with 70.4% pen ratio, which is not 72. In case you were curious, the normal pen stat does not affect this calculation either, so Rena currently is stuck with 70.4% pen ratio at max, and therefore 
score only provides a 29.6% pen ratio buff to the team. Side note, using Slice of Time instead of Weeping Cradle does not change the pen ratio buff that much since it still provides 28.6% pen ratio. Now finally, we can talk about the stats and build that Rena will be aiming for. Rena will want as much pen ratio as she can find, of course, so that means a 5th slot pen ratio disc is mandatory. Her 4th disc can either be Anomaly Proficiency for debuff gaming or crit if you're a monster. And finally, her 6th slot disc can either be Attack, Anomaly Mastery, or Energy Regen. All of these options are fine, but deciding on the main stat for your arena will ultimately come down to how the discs rolled and what combination of set plus W engine you have. A sample build for arena would be the following. 4-piece Freedom Blues, 2-piece Swing Jazz, Weeping Cradle because you lost a 50-50 on Ju Yuan's W engine banner, or a Slice of Time, and finally, a disc combination of Anomaly Proficiency, Pen Ratio, and Energy Regen. Stat-wise, you are looking for at least 280 Anomaly Proficiency, 2 Energy Regen if you decide to use a Pen Ratio W engine, and 66.4 Pen Ratio, assuming an A-ranked W engine. Truthfully, any stat here beside Energy Regen and Pen Ratio will not drastically affect Rena's gameplay, especially if you haven't invested a lot in her yet, so keep that in mind when building her. Let's talk Mindscapes. Rena's first Mindscape extends the duration that the ghosts stay out on field, and this is both a significant quality of life and decent performance boost. Not needing to swap back to Rena is a quality of life buff since you don't need to reapply the pen ratio buff as often, but this also means that she can allow other allies to stay on field for longer. The time it takes to swap to Rena and cast your EX special or a basic attack is not super long, to be clear, but you will end up doing this roughly 14 times a fight. As a result, reducing this number from 14 to 9 does mean that you save 5 separate instances where you would otherwise swap and use Rena's EX special attack. Now, trying to put a definitive value on these 5 saved moments is tough, but the quality of life value is definitely huge. Rena's second and fourth mindscapes are pretty decent for Rena's personal performance, but I want to fixate on her sixth mindscape. It reads, when an EX special attack, chain attack, or ultimate hits an enemy, the entire squad's electric damage is increased by 15% for 8 seconds. If this sounds familiar, this would be because it's nearly the same value from Rena's additional ability. Of course, the big difference here is that you don't need a shocked enemy on the field, and the damage increase is 5% higher. This is nice for disorder teams, since you don't need to keep the shock effect on for the damage bonus. The 15% as opposed to 10% electric damage bonus is also definitely valuable if you're running Grace in a Disorder team. The final section we'll dive into is Rena's team composition. There are a few that stand out and are strong, so let's highlight their strengths. The first team is Grace Piper Rena, and this is her best anomaly based team. Grace is a perfect pairing with Rena since the shock duration increase and electric damage bonus provide Grace with insane damage boosts. Piper in this case does feel a bit out of place since she's just there to apply assault and allow for the disorder proc, but regardless, she applies anomaly extremely fast and is the perfect final agent to this team composition. The second team is Ellen Rena Sokaku, and this team has two major strengths. The first is the double damage increasing buffs. The pen ratio and the attack increase from Rena and Sokaku respectively do have a lot of value here. The second strength is specifically for when you aren't able to stun the bosses off. In some scenarios like with Withering Garden, the boss, Nineveh, will take a very long time to stun. Since this is the case, if you're able to swap out your support later, or if you're able to go without a stunner entirely until the final stage, you'll definitely find value in the pen ratio from a buffer instead of a stunner. Keep in mind though that this is an exchange for being able to stun the enemies that Nineveh spawns though. A final disclaimer that I'd like to make about this team is that it does also have the benefit of freeing Ambi from being paired with Ellen in case you wanted to use her somewhere else, but this is less of a strength and more so something to think about. On that note, the final team I'd like to mention is Billy Sokaku Rena as the ultimate free to play team if you unluckily received Rena from your beginner banner and have no one else. This team is honestly not super great since it doesn't have a stunner and it doesn't do much damage, but it can be used while you're waiting for a limited character to arrive on banner or if you don't have anything else. Sorry Billy lovers, maybe he'll get some love soon. And finally, we have the last disclaimer and semi tips section. This section is mainly for the tips or tricks that, that didn't fit too well in other sections, so I included them here. The first is about pen ratio, which is that stacking more pen ratio will make it better, but at the same time, this will make the addition of defense shred from a character like Nicole worse. This works in reverse and was something I thought was important to mention since I've seen a lot of people talk about Rena and Nicole. In other words, stacking one source of shred slash pen is definitely better than mixing the two, though this may not always be possible. The other is that the current highest defense down you can get in the game would be alongside Chingy and Nicole, with Nicole giving 40% def down and Chingy giving 15. The current highest pen ratio you can get would be in a team with Grace and Rena, with both characters having their signature W engine, and this would grant Rena a total of 70.4% pen ratio and Grace a total of 85.6% pen ratio. If you have Rena's M1, however, Grace can actually increase this total to 94.48% pen ratio. Sorry for the rant 
ramblings here at the end, but I thought it was cool, so I decided to share it. Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching if you made it this far. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to check out the rest of my socials. I appreciate all of you guys that have been giving me support on the videos. I will see you guys next time. Stay safe, stay healthy. Good night.